Welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. A middle-aged man going through a divorce begins dating a woman he met online. The relationship becomes torrid, and eventually the man sends his girlfriend lewd texts and nude photographs of himself. Several years later, the two break up, and in revenge, the woman shares their private correspondence with other people. Nude pictures of the man wind up on the Internet and ultimately in the media. He is ridiculed and humiliated. So who's the victim here? If you guess the 68-year-old man whose five grandchildren can now find naked pictures of him online, you obviously haven't been reading the Washington Post lately. The man in question is Republican Congressman Joe Barton of Texas, and according to the Washington Post, he deserves to be ashamed of his, quote, secret sex life. Keep in mind that nobody has accused Barton of abuse or even abuse of power. The relationship was consensual. If anything, it is Barton's former girlfriend who may be guilty of a crime. So-called revenge porn is illegal in many places and ought to be. And yet, for reasons never explained, the Washington Post and many other media outlets treated Barton like the heir to Harvey Weinstein, even offering anonymity to the woman who overturned his life and humiliated him. Sex abuse stories have dominated the news for the past six weeks, beginning with Weinstein. Predators in Hollywood, the media, and politics have been exposed, and they have been punished. And that is good news, because justice is always good news. And we'll continue to bring you updates on those stories as we get them, and we sure we will. But going forward, we should also be careful that the noble effort to end sexual harassment does not degenerate into a witch hunt. It can happen, as the Washington Post just proved. So with that in mind, two things to remember. First, anonymous accusations always lead to abuses. The right to face your accuser is the cornerstone of justice and has been since ancient Rome. That's why it's enshrined in the Sixth Amendment to the Constitution. It's why we ban star chambers. We don't allow people to accuse others of armed robbery or murder from behind the shield of anonymity. Why do media outlets allow it in cases of sexual harassment? If you're going to name the accused, you ought to name the accuser, assuming it's an adult. News organizations are not courts. They shouldn't take a side when guilt and innocence are in dispute. It's too easy to get it wrong, and they often do. Second, not everyone accused of a sex offense is guilty. Not every accuser is telling the truth. I learned this the hard way a number of years ago when I was accused of felony rape by a woman I'd literally never even seen. She was a certified public accountant in Indiana, an upstanding member of her community, and also apparently delusional. Her claims were grotesque, but they were highly specific. The assault, she said, took place in the back room of a restaurant in Louisville on a specific day at around 10.30 p.m. She included loads of graphic and horrifying detail. It was stomach-turning, and yet none of it, none of it, was true. I spent the next two months trying to stay out of jail. I couldn't tell my children because I knew they'd be ashamed. I couldn't tell my employer because I knew I'd be fired immediately. I spoke only to lawyers, and I paid them a fortune. I took a polygraph exam from the former head polygrapher at the FBI. I never stopped worrying that the charges would become public and destroy my life. Everyone accused of a sex offense did something wrong. Everybody knows that, and I knew that no one would believe otherwise. This isn't a defense of sexual harassment or misbehavior, obviously. It's just a reminder that real life is complicated, more complicated than sermonizing on Twitter. Sometimes the mob is wrong. Sometimes the innocent are crushed. That's always a tragedy, no matter what the charge is. Of course, crushing the innocent may also be the point of the exercise, and we're seeing that. Last week, a feminist called Emily Linden announced on Twitter that she was, quote, not at all concerned about innocent men losing their jobs in the search for perpetrators of sexual harassment. Quote, if some innocent men's reputations have to take a hit in the process of undoing the patriarchy, that is a price I am absolutely willing to pay. Linda, not surprisingly, is a columnist at Teen Vogue. We asked her to come on tonight to talk about her views, but she refused. Instead, we're joined by Kathy Rue. Kathy, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, look, I agree with you completely. I think that if someone perpetrates a crime, legal or moral, like sexual harassment, that person ought to be held to account. So I right. want to be really clear. Right. I would never defend that. Right. I would never defend that either. But the whole point of the exercise is to bring about justice, to make sure that the guilty pay and the innocent go free. Exactly. This woman seems to be, Sarah is saying, that it doesn't matter that all men are guilty by virtue of being men. That's the opposite 
of justice. That's collective punishment. You wouldn't be for that, would you? No, I mean, I'm not for social injustice. But what she's trying to say, it, it, that it would be microscopic compared to what women have been through. You mentioned witch hunts. There are no warlock hunts. There were never any wizard hunts. I mean, women are the ones that are often persecuted. And the mobs that you were talking about, the mobs are usually the men that are burning innocent women at the stake. So women okay. are usually the ones that suffer much more than men. And I think that's what Emily okay, well, Lyndon assuming, was trying assuming to say. That's, I mean, just for the sake of argument, I'll assume that that's true. We're not teaching a history class here, but right. certainly people have been persecuted unfairly by mobs, that's for sure. For centuries, women sexes. have been persecuted, okay, yes. Sure. And, and, and men, too, in some cases. But, but leaving the sex aside, if it was wrong then, why wouldn't you be every bit as horrified that it's going on now or that it could potentially happen now? Why wouldn't you be horrified by what this woman wrote? Well, I, she she was defending it, saying that it would be um, it would be wrong, but microscopic in the sense that what happens to women and women's reputations is so much worse than what would happen to a man's reputation. Women's reputations are destroyed constantly on a daily basis, and so and facts men, don't I mean, so facts don't really matter. So in other words, she's saying you should respect me when I make the case that facts don't really matter? Well, maybe she's, she's trying to say, let's level the playing field, and men are finally feeling the pain that women have felt for a long time, for centuries. And that's good. Well, it's good when um, the sexes, when the genders are equal. And she's saying that maybe it's about time that they're so equal. So in other words, you're saying, like, I think what happened to women is wrong, so I'm going to do it to men because it feels good. Why yeah. should I take you seriously as a person if that's the case you're Well, I, I, social injustice is not okay, but she's saying it happens to women all of the time. So men are finally getting a taste of it. Women are finally getting a little bit of power. So now if men are starting to feel a little bit of the pain, welcome to our club. Huh. So how would you feel if this standard, yeah. which is horrifying, yeah. were applied to crimes like, I don't know, murder or armed robbery? Like, I don't know if you did it, but you look exactly like someone who has done it. Therefore, if you're punished for it, like, you know, at least you now know how it feels. How well, would you feel about that? Well, it's, it's rare. Women rarely accuse men of sexual harassment. It's rare that in her article she was actually saying that, in her tweets she was saying that it was rare that it actually happened. She doesn't know anything. What do you mean rare? Look, well, that's what I she mean, was look, saying. If, that's what no, she was here, here's what she doesn't know. If you can present the stats, like actual social science on that, right. but here's what we know is that people are flawed. And right. most people tell the truth, but not everybody does. And that's why we have things like due process and a justice system right. that tries to determine objectively who is guilty and who is innocent and punishes only the first category. And right. she's suggesting, and a lot of other people like you are suggesting, just throw that out because everybody who makes an accusation is telling the truth when we know that's not true. Well, like, I don't just... want to live in the world you're describing. Do you really want to? No, no. Like I said, I mean, social injustice, and I don't, I don't believe in that. But I'm saying we, let's live in a world with everyone's reputations at stake, not just women. Not just women right. are called names. Not just women's reputations are at stake. There aren't just witch hunts. Let's have the wizard hunts. Let's have everyone um, b burned at the stake, if anyone's going to burn at the stake. So I Wait, think that's the I mean, philosophy. wouldn't it be better to treat people as individuals and yeah. assess the claims against people on Absolutely. an individual basis? Absolutely, and, but it's not happening. And like be, it's, it's not, not happening. happening for women. No, women are the minority in this country, and we still are um, fighting for our equal rights. So men are still in power. You are still in power. So, but, so you're suggesting that if women ever took power, whatever that means, I mean, I don't buy the premise of what you just said, by the way, but right. let's just say that if a group that felt itself to be oppressed took power, that it would oppress the group beneath it just as kind of payback is fair? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, that group is not in power. So what I'm saying is that if that group were to be in power, it would probably be a better place because we all know that women are less violent than men. Uh, they commit less murders than men, and women are just um, not that way. So it would actually probably be a better world if women were in charge. So yeah. yeah. I mean, you may be right. You're not making that case very persuasively, I have to say. What? Why, why, not? why is it that in the case of these kinds of allegations, yeah. the accusers identity is shielded like the the, the basis of because justice the is the idea that no not the victim the, the accuser no no this none of this has gone to court the facts are not fully known okay okay the victim and the accuser are two different things once you've right. proven you've been harmed you're the victim before then you're the accuser right why would we jettison thousands of years of tradition of jurisprudence right and hide the identity of the accuser how would you feel if you were accused of something and you didn't know who was accusing you 
Right. Well, but we're seeing there are many men that are guilty right now. So sure, yeah, there are. Yeah, there are many men that are guilty, and um, you you weren't one of them, but many men are guilty. So these women are speaking up, and okay. they're having a voice now. So it's it's wonderful that they have a voice and they feel empowered to do a so. A voice, a voice, but no name or face. So in other words, let me just ask you again: How would you? And by the way, I think most people accused of these kinds of crimes are guilty. Okay, but what That's been breaks proven. on my yes, conscience yes, is that some of them some of them aren't. Right. And so I'm wondering how you would feel if I said, you know, Kathy, um, the, I've spoken to someone who accuses you of something right. that's career ending, that's life ending. It's a grave moral crime. Right. And I'm not going to tell you who this person is, but I'm going to tell everybody what this person accuses you of. Wouldn't you say, hey, wait a second, who is this person? I want to face my accuser. Wouldn't you think that? I would feel like a woman has felt over the centuries, like the scarlet letter, like Hester Prynne that had to wear the scarlet letter A. I would feel like a woman the way she's been treated over the centuries. Women have been accused for, for years, for hundreds of years, of crimes that they didn't commit because they weren't pure enough. But they haven't been accused anonymously, not in this country, because it's never been allowed until recently. Not it's it. never been allowed. And that would be that would include the Puritan times, that would include the Hester Prynne era that you're referring to. People are not accused anonymously because that leads inevitably to abuses. I just want to leave on that concept. Do you understand that? Uh, what I'm abso saying? Absolutely. And I, as okay. I said, I don't, I don't believe that anyone should be accused falsely, but I understand uh, her way of thinking, Emily Linden's way of thinking. And I can see what she was saying, that if men suffer in just a microscopic way compared to the way women have suffered, so be it. Yeah. I hope you never sit on a jury, much as I like you, Kathy. No, Thank I like you. you too.